Hello there and a very good evening and welcome to another episode of the People's Platform here on News First for the News First team. I am Jaimal Ratnayaka and today as always we have a very interesting subject to talk about and we'll dive right into it. They say learning is a lifelong process. You go to school, you go to universities and then you complete your tertiary education but although you complete your academic education you never really stop learning till the day you die and today we will be discussing the fact of learning but in more effective ways and how the contemporary age has adopted new ways of learning and teaching people to learn how to absorb things in a more effective way. To discuss that and much more, we have invited to our studios this evening Mr. Ranjit Dadivalage, who is an educator, who is an academic and more, more importantly, he is someone who has mastered the art of learning to learn. Thank you very much, Mr. Dadivalage, for joining me this evening to discuss this very prominent and uh, very important topic. Let's get straight into it, Mr. Dadivalage. I want to ask you, before the program, we had uh, a very brief chat and you told me your track record and I was very impressed by it and I'm sure our viewers are also very eager to know about what sort of experiences you've had in life and what inspired you to become an academic and then also an educator inspiring thousands and thousands of children the world over. So can you just on the ons outset of our program give us a small brief on your track record and your experiences? Yeah, so uh, if I tell you my life story, so uh, I have been graduated from uh, University of Sri Javadanapur in Sri Lanka. Mm. That's where I have started my journey. Yes. So after graduating, I have been working as a teacher in Sri Lanka. Mm. So I'm coming from the, I know what Sri Lankan education system is. So then I moved out of the country uh, in 1983. Mm. And since then, um, I have been working in, um, including Sri Lanka, I have been working in six different countries. I was in Nigeria, I was in Maldives, I was in Zimbabwe, New Zealand and currently in Australia. Yes. Working as a teacher and uh, also uh, I have held several positions in Australia, uh, starting from a teacher to a principal and to involved in various other uh, things. and. Uh, a lot of my work has been recognized by the uh, Australian government as well as the other education institutions in Australia mm. and been awarded few few awards I have won. Uh, so I have a passion in learning. Mm. So I didn't use the word teaching because I'm against the word teaching. teaching. The teaching has to be learning, you know, so it's a it's a way of uh, making our children understand that learning is an individual process. So what t as teachers what we could do, what we could do is to make them learn. So to make them learn we facilitate various things, mm. the resources uh, or other, other ways that we could help them in achieving their journey or, or achieving their goal or go through their journey. So that's what uh, the teacher, as teachers, we have to do. That's what I believe. Right. Let's delve more deeper into that topic, Mr. Dadivalage. As you know, every sector in this world, as new advancements are made, they go through shifts. There are paradigm shifts. And I believe even the education sector has gone through such a paradigm shift, although it might not reflect fully here in Sri Lanka. And we were discussing about the concept of 21st century learning and we were discussing the contemporary methods of teaching or like you say making a child learn new things can you explain to me what 21st century learning really encompasses mm -hmm. okay let me take a small example mm. let's say that uh, if you think about the future, so a, a student in the school right now, 
or student who enroll in year one, 2024, mm. will come out of the school in 2037. Right. If that person do a four-year degree, that person will come out of the university in 2041. So the world then mm. will be unknown world. We never know what's going to happen. The jobs that person has to do has not even been discovered. So to understand that uh, uh, in in f uh, what I'm talking is something in the abstract space. Mm. It's difficult to comprehend, difficult to understand. So I invite you to rewind you back to 10 years. Mm. First, rewind you back to 10 years and see what are the things which which were the things available to you. Yes. So people did not know anything about online learning before COVID. Exactly. So now we have new things. Even people didn't know about Zoom. Mm. So like that, if you rewind yourself 20 years back, so we didn't hear about YouTube, we didn't hear about the email or anything. So the world will be different. Mm. And <coughs> the content that we are trying to pour into students' heads, because the, as you said, the paradigm is teacher is the authoritarian who knows everything and teacher is trying to pour that knowledge into students' head. Exactly. So that's the paradigm that we were working from the industrial age. Mm. Now things are changing. There are new tools, even Google, if you want to get anything that you want to know, you can Google it. Google error also has gone. Since this February this year, this new artificial intelligence tools have come into the scene. You can use chat GPT. Mm. Any topic, anything, I challenge you, take any O-level question paper, any subject, type the question in uh, chat GPT, mm. two seconds you get the answer. If you want to limit it to 50 words, 100 words, yes. they will do it for you. So, we are trying to educate children in that era. So, the way that we are trying to pour content is not valid anymore. Therefore, for the 21st century, people need, uh, the research suggests that only four skills that is required. They call it four C's. If I uh, say those four C's, mm. first one is critical thinking, creative thinking, mm. collaboration and communication. So if we can teach students or if we can help them to develop these four skills, then they could do anything. The content that we are trying to pour into their heads, they can get in two seconds using any of these new tools. So, therefore, as educators, what we need to look at is how could we change our uh, education paradigm from that pouring knowledge into people's head, honing these skills mm. to survive in the future. Talking about that, uh, Mr. Dadivalage, I was just thinking, if you apply this in a very uh, Sri Lankan concept, in, especially in Sri Lankan schools and universities, it's a more uh, teacher-centered approach where the teacher teaches you, in essence, you learn and you leave and then you come back and answer an exam paper. How do we go beyond this and make this entire gamut a learner-based or learner-centered learning yeah. approach where the student absorbs and discovers the meaning of different concepts and uh, arguments and so on. Yeah. So, that's one of the very important things. So, our system is very teacher-centered. Mm. Teacher decides everything. What to teach, when to teach, how to teach, how to test it. Exactly. All that is decided by the teacher or the authorities. Mm. So, the room that we have left for student contribution is very limited. Mm. So nowadays, 
that's not what happens in the other parts of the world, especially the developed world. Yes. We always try to make it student centered. Yes. We starting with telling them what is our plan. Mm. So what's the plan for today's lesson? What are we trying to achieve? How am I going to test that whether you have achieved it or not? Mm. All that be disclosed to students at the beginning and have a conversation with them. Then they will say, no, that's not a good way to measure it. We will do something like this. So then we get the students' input. And it is more student-centered. The, the thing, what we are going to teach is what they like to learn. Mm. That's number one. And the way that we are going to teach is the way they like to learn. And the way that we are going to test the understanding is the way that they have want to show how they know it. So therefore, it's, it has been very effective. Mm. Uh, so rather than that we try to give them the content as much as possible and then ask them to come and uh, to, to ask them to memorize it and come and recite it in an exam or test or something like that. So Mr. Dadivalke, can you give me an example as to how this theory has been put into practice, maybe in a country such as Australia where you uh, apply your trade? Can you just put this theory into practice and tell me a practical example? Yes. Let me tell you a practical example. The one of the ma there are a number of different things. I'm just talking about one thing. Yes. There is an approach called problem based learning. Mm. Let's for a minute we'll talk about that. Yes, sure. In this problem based learning, what we do is anything that we want students to learn, mm. we will present it as a problem. Mm. So, in the process that they are trying to solve this problem, they acquire knowledge and they learn. Rather than teacher telling them, they go and research and this is what you said, learning to learn. If they know how to learn, they will go and research, they will go and br bring those information and they synthesize it and then comes to the uh, the different level of thinking that they can go through. Right. So, I think we are bordering on the higher order thinking concept because there are two concepts. Uh, one is lower order thinking which is uh, essentially recall and repeat that uh, we have adopted and the higher order thinking concept where the skills that go beyond memorizing information, uh, for example, critical thinking, analytical thinking, problem solving, uh, like uh, Mr. Dadivalage mentioned. So, let's talk about higher order thinking, Mr. Dadivalage. Okay. We know that when it comes to higher order thinking, there is a very important concept called, called Bloom's taxonomy. And uh, Bloom's taxonomy also mentions uh, six key pillars, remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating and creating. Can you talk to me more about uh, higher order thinking and uh, what we should do to achieve that? Yes. The very first thing is to understand this, uh, the taxonomy or the classification that you mentioned. Yes. So, it is not any something new. Mm. It was first put forward by uh, a psychologist by the name Benjamin Bloom. Okay. In 1956. Right. So the year I was born. So it's not something new. Mm. So there were some various, uh, you know, modification, not modifications, some alterations and changing the language, and they have come to this current version, version. that you are talking about. Mm. It is uh, so. Every teacher in this country, or any country, if they have undergone an education course, education uh, theory, they have learned about Bloom's taxonomy. Right. So it's not something new for our teachers. Mm. They know this very well. But our system has not allowed them to apply. Because within our system, our system is governed by the exams. So we will, we want people to learn or rem uh, memorize and recite. So because of that, the opportunity to go to these higher levels have been stopped or mm. prevented. So, let me take an example. So, to first to explain you what are these six levels. Yes. 
any take any concept so let's say that we want to talk about an egg you have egg in front of you mm. the lowest level of understanding about the egg is it is round it's brown to white color in color uh, the shell is fragile you have to handle it carefully yes those are the basic information about the egg mm. that's the basic level of what is we call remembering we have to remember the facts information then in this hierarchy if you go to the next level of this ladder we come from remembering to understanding to understand the purpose of these facts mm. purpose of what we know about the egg mm. what can we do with the egg we can use the egg for baking or cooking or we can use the egg to bind ingredients together or we can use egg to moisture some sort of a recipe ko to roti we put a egg to moisture it so that's the next level of understanding we which call, is understanding which is understanding we call remembering then, then understanding. understanding then we come to the next level which is called applying mm. to apply now you have to do something mm. you use the egg and make an omelet or make something out of it do a baking make a cake mm. that's the applying part of the egg then comes to the next level analyzing the egg mm. analyze the egg you have to look at the parts of the eggs egg yolk is yellow color what can you do with that the egg white what sort of things that egg white can use what are the, the components it's made of components in it so egg shell so you you analyze you look at to try to understand these different components which comes together about the egg so then go to the next level let's say now we have talked about remembering, remembering understanding, understanding applying, applying analyzing, analyzing and then evaluating, evaluating. Mm. now we are looking at the egg and see how do we check the quality of this egg let uh, let the egg float in water mm. or break the egg and see the the texture of the white uh, the, the yolk white or the yolk mm. whether it's very runny then it is an old egg mm. so we we make an evaluation or we use all this information and things that we know to all these levels of, to make a judgment mm. about the egg so then comes to the final or the highest level of thinking about this egg what can you make with this this egg something which has uh, someone has never done so you can create a new sort of omelet some extravagance or ingredients that you put in you it, can add cheese you cheese, can add any sort of anything. condiments so it's a new thing you are mm. creating a new thing you know so that's that's the highest level of thing. so in our education system we don't leave enough uh, opportunity to get into the higher levels we we give them information mostly what happens is stud- teachers have to write the topic on the board put the notes on the board t- students copy that they go and memorize what are the parts of uh, flower what are the uh, parts of uh, anything you know mm. so you just get the information then you come and just apply it we, we not even, even apply not even apply very i i if i say so it's it's unfair for the system yes there are they they do the uh, uh, remembering part they do the uh, understanding, understanding part. part remembering part and sometimes they go to they apply border part on as the well, applying applying but nothing beyond but not in a practical not sense not in a practical sense because our assessment this pen and paper tests will not provide the opportunity to go beyond that right if so, yeah 
So I, wa I want to uh, talk to you, Mr. Dadivalage, about assessments and formative, summative assessments and how we can apply theory into practice uh, in the, the brilliant example you brought forward about an egg and how, how well-rounded that theory is. Uh, we will cross over for a short commercial break, but we will be right back. So stay tuned to the People's Platform. Welcome back to the People's Platform. Today we are discussing the art of learning to learn. And we have with us Mr. Ranjit Dadivalage, who is an educator. Before we crossed over for our commercial break, Mr. Dadivalage, we were talking about higher order thinking and how higher order thinking came about as a result of uh, Bloom's taxonomy, where there are six pillars which are remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating. Uh, application of the syllabus or the content that you learned. Can we make this shift, can we make such a drastic shift without the support of government and educators and teachers who eventually go on to uh, educate children? What sort of measures should be taken from all stakeholders point of view, from the government, from educators and also from the students to ensure that these new methods, the higher order thinking method is instilled and it is effective? Yes, very good question in my view because you know if you ask any principal or any teacher or most teachers in this country, they all will say our aim is to produce or, or develop our students hmm. to face the 21st century. Right. The 21st century learning has uh, that word, uh, that phrase has become the buzzword. So we talked about it. We, we are talking, 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 but we don't know how to transform from the current point to that point. There are a number of different reasons for that. To be honest, you know, the, even the government is trying to do it. Mm. The current government is trying to do it and the previous government was trying to do it. If you look at, if you go to a Ministry of Education website, there are two documents. Mm. One is called e Igenuma, the other one is called the uh, New Reform Proposals or Agenda for 22 to 2032 or something like that. So in both these documents, they highlight the importance of this approach, the importance of moving away from this content-heavy curriculum. Mm. They talked about moving away from this examination-based assessment. Even Minister, Minister of Education currently announced, I have heard it, that he is speaking. He told from next year, mm. There won't be three term tests. Mm. There's only one, one term, term test. test. So in that term test also, only 70% taken from that test. The 30% come from the summative, not from the summative assessment, formative assessments that we do mm. over the term. Right. The summative assessment has given only 70%. And he said eventually it goes 50-50. Right. But the way I see it, it should go 70, 30 or 70, 80, 20 kind of thing. 70 formative, 70, uh, formative 20, and 20 uh, summative. 30 summative. 30 right. summative. So that's because the when you look at the hierarchy of Bloom's hierarchy of thinking, yes, this uh, remembering and understanding is important. Yes. Without that, you can't go anywhere. Those are the That's basic the foundation. Level. That's the foundation, mm. right? But the issue now is students have new tools to get that. Yes. That information you don't have to get from a teacher mm. or from the school. Mm. Even without going to school by you Googling can self -learn. or using chat GPT, GPT, they can get all that information. Right. So when they come to school, they should have the opportunity to go into the higher levels. Mm. But we don't do that yes. because 
our assessment system is based on uh, summative, summative assessments, assessments. Mm. because of that teachers are preparing them. You can't blame the teachers. That's the system. Not only that, the difficulty of change, if you want to change anything, first you have to understand, especially something like education, people have their belief structure. This belief structure is culturally formed, historically rooted in people's mind. We all have our beliefs about what should happen in a classroom. Exactly. So when a mom sends the child to the school, mom has some belief this is what should happen in the school. I they have a preconceived notion of what happens what in happen? a classroom. Yeah. So if teachers go against it or beyond it or do something different, then they will draw criticism. They will criticism. The teachers are telling me, uh, so I have I have been working with teachers. That's, yes, that's why I have come here. So when I work, uh, when I was working with them, they're telling me, if we if you don't give them enough notes, next day the principal gets a call that this teacher has not done anything in the class. So that's the that's the understanding of our belief. So without changing these belief structures, without working on it. If you send a circular and say n from next year we, we have only one term test, yes. it's not going to work. Mm. So it's so what I'm uh, I'm not criticizing anyone for even no, for the government. What I'm, uh, what I'm what I'm appealing them mm. is the two documents are both in English. So make it available in all languages. It's available in all languages. That's the first step. So, if you want to uh, educate all the stakeholders, yeah. make it available in all languages, surface the discussion and the media like you have a role to play as well to in more, disseminating more frequently this information. have this, right. this sort of discussions yes. and uh, promote it. It is about transparency from the part of the government on how this uh, shift is going to happen involving all stakeholders including the parents, the children, the educators and so on. But what are the practical difficulties you have realized when uh, educating teachers in, uh, in your line of work, that's especially in Sri Lanka? There is four, four components to it. Hmm. First one is the curriculum. When I say curriculum, it has three parts. Syllabus, the so-called syllabus, yes. the pedagogy, yeah. the way we teach, teach and the assessment. So, without looking at this critically, the assessment and the syllabus, mm. without looking at this critically, without making the adjustments that we want to make, it is difficult to go beyond it. Then comes the pedagogy. To change the pedagogy, pedagogy means the way that teachers teach. To change the pedagogy, the second component is teacher learning. Do we have enough opportunities for the teachers to learn? Learning means not go to a university and get a certificate and course. Exactly. That's not what I mean. Yes. Professional learning is practically. Do they have the opportunity to engage in a ongoing research activity in the class to change something and see whether it works. You know, it's called action research. Mm. So, do they have opportunities to do action research? So, the first one is the curriculum, second one is the teacher learning. Then comes to the infrastructure, which is about the computers, computers availability, the other uh, other resources, the labs, data loggers that do you have all these things. So that infrastructure because 21st century plays big role, uh, technology plays a big role in 21st century. So I heard, I'm, uh, I don't know whether this statistic is right, mm. but I heard in one of the programs. 85% of the teachers in Sri Lanka don't have no access to computers. So I don't know whether it's right, but I am sure a large number of teachers don't have access to computers. computers yes, you know. So then it's difficult. And even in households, we have difficulties. Students don't have computers. So therefore, how can we make our infrastructure better that students have more access to the technology? Mm. 
that is the third one. The last fourth one is to, to instigate change, you have to work with all the stakeholders. These stakeholders include the teaching staff, non-academic staff, uh, parents, uh, friends, old boys, you know, there are some schools, the old boys have a big influence yes, on what what's happening in the school. Mm. So, you have to educate them, the general public and have a open, honest discussion about what we are doing, not to find faults with people or not to find faults with the system, to have engage in a good conversation to understand where we should go. Right. In your mind, Mr. Dadivalagi, what is the ideal education sector here in Sri Lanka. What do you envision? Assume so, that you were given the task of restructuring the education system in Sri Lanka. Where would you start first? I will start from changing the assessment system. The assessment system governs most of the things. So, when you have uh, that sort of summative exam based assessment system. We have exam in year 5 scholarship yes. exam, we have exam in year 11 O level exam, we have a scholarship, uh, we have another exam in year 30. Year 5 scholarship exam, from year 1 parents are training them <coughs> for year 5 scholarship exam. To an unwanted competition. Unwanted competition. And I saw an uh, institution in Nugegado or some place, they are running a tuition class for uh, parents or mothers of year 5 students, how to train them for the exam. So, as soon as they pass, the, pass that point, yeah. from year 6, they are training for O level levels. exam. Three term test in year 6. 3 in 7, 3 in 8, 3 in 9, 3 in 10, 3 in 11, 18 times giving them test and they collect those test marks and the zonal department want those marks to be sent. They decide what the exam is, what the exam looks like. It's all lower order uh, state two reasons for this or uh, describe something, not go beyond that uh, uh, applying level, low order thinking. So, therefore, the whole whole thing drives by that. Mm. So, uh, even though I said that I start with the assessment, it is a holistic approach. Right. We need to work on all the fronts. See, you brought up uh, a very interesting point there. Unfortunately, we are running out of time, but I want to touch on it because here in Sri Lanka, the pressure uh, placed by parents on their children, uh, I'm not generalizing the fact, but most parents want their child to do well. That is, uh, that is common in every part of the world, but here it's more about academic success and a child's capabilities are tested and assessed based on how well they score in their ter term test. So, what, what message do you have for parents mm -hmm. in ensuring that their children are not only good on paper, but they turn out to be good citizens with good analytical skills, social emotional skills and so on. What is your message to parents, Mr. Darivalke? So, if I am, uh, I, I do not have that, that level of uh, children. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I, I deal with my grandchildren at the moment. Yes. So, uh, you know, the, the children, the capacity of children are amazing. So, the children that we have now, their generation is different. Their generation is called alpha generation mm. because we have run out of all the letters in the English alphabet X, Y, Z. Yes. Z generation is the generation before that. They are called alpha, alpha generation. generation. This generation has born into this technology. You know, uh, uh, during uh, last year, uh, I just uh, share one of my experiences. Yes, sure. Last October, I asked my grandchildren, what do they want for Christmas? They jump into the computer and uh, Google, it. Google it and showed me this is what they want. 
I asked them, I said, I don't understand, what is this? Is it a game or a book or a toy? You then they said, uh, so they showed me that and then I said, let me write it down. Yes. They said, no, no, see, you don't have to. We'll, we can bookmark it for you. And they bookmark it. Then I said, uh, so now I need to find out, I, I have to phone Kmart and check whether this is it's available. available. They said, you don't have to do all that. Uh, let's do it for you. Right? They quickly Google it and they said it is available at Kmart. It's $65. If you can give me your credit card, I can order it. it online. Yes. I can order it. Mm. So that's their world. We, we, were, we are not used to it. So therefore, we should not limit the capacity, limit their capabilities. We need to look at the world that they are going to face in the future. We have to prepare them for that world. It is very, very important. Some parents think, yes, there is a danger in any technology. If you have make the knife to cut bread, but can someone can used to kill, someone. kill someone as well. So, there is, you have to educate them those things as well. The moral development is also important. While we are doing that, we have to encourage them to learn more and more and more the new technologies and involved in problem solving, be creative, be critical and those higher order skills. So that's the message, the message that, that you have to, you to give. Yeah. We uh, certainly had a very insightful discussion on uh, the art of learning to learn and uh, I myself and I'm sure our viewers too gained a lot of knowledge uh, from what you shared today Mr. Dadiwalage. Thank you very much for joining me on oh, the show welcome. this evening and we hope to have you back again to discuss more about the, the new trends and the new uh, concepts that are brought forward in the education sector. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have tonight on the People's Platform. Take care and stay safe.